experiment on the effects of ocean acidification on shark foraging behavior. So as we all know, the oceans are steadily decreasing in pH due to elevated amounts of CO2 in the water. Mm -hmm. And we just wanted to see if, if and how sharks would get affected by, by elevated CO2 levels. All right. In your, in your presentation, you mentioned an earlier paper on clownfish behavior. Uh, what, what happened to those clownfish when they were exposed to the type of acidity we're likely to see in the oceans in the next exactly. century? Um, so an Australian research team conducted a study on clownfish larvae, and those larvae lost the ability to um, respond to olfactory cues, basically to... Um, uh, to settle? They lost their sense of smell. Mm -hmm. um, when they were raised in elevated CO2 levels. Mm -hmm. And we just wanted to see if this holds true for sharks as well. All right. And how did you test this? This is a, a very complicated problem. How did, how did you test this for sharks? What methods did you use? We first kept sharks in small plastic baby pools and had um, CO2 bubbled into the pools until a certain concentration was reached. And then we took the sharks out of the pool and put them in a big flume chamber, which is basically a channel and with a strong water flow. And we had two order sources. One was one that the sharks actually liked and one that they rather avoided. And we just tested, tested them before the treatment and saw that they really liked one of the order sources, which was the squid juice, and they didn't like the other one. And after the treatment, we found that they could not even locate the water sources. They were just swimming in a very weird way and were not able to track towards the source of the water. So it had, this, it had a similar effect that it, the ocean acidification had a similar effect on these sharks as it did on the clownfish. It affected their sense of smell. That's what we think. We don't know yet what the physiological basis behind this is, so a lot more work needs to be done. But right now, just based on the clownfish study, that's what we assume. All right, and if if a shark no longer has its a, its sense of smell, what how is it going to be able to find food? Is is that going to be a major impact? We know that sharks have seven senses, but yeah, but um, it depends on the species. We chose the dogfish because it's a species that greatly relies on the sense of smell when locating prey. So for this species, it would be seriously detrimental if it lost the sense of smell and basically be not able to locate food anymore. Okay. So you, you also mentioned that not only did they not go towards the squid juice as they did ordinarily, but their other aspects of the shark's behavior were also different. Yes, it seemed like they were not able to swim properly anymore. They were sort of swimming sideways and touching the side of the flume with one of their fins and their stomach. Mm -hmm. Or they were even putting their head out of the water and sort of dancing mm -hmm. on the flume. So behavior very much not normal for these exactly. animals. So not just a, not just an effect of captivity. No, because we had also a control group that was kept under the exact same conditions and also tested on the same test days as the treated animals. And these animals did not show any any change in behavior at all. All right. And what what sort of other organisms is is ocean acidification likely to affect the most? Well, we all know. Uh, the effects of ocean acidification on corals and other classifying marine organisms. And so far not much research has been done on, on other organisms, but I think if we can show that it affects clownfish larvae and sharks, that definitely more species will be affected. So we're likely to see very wide-ranging effects, not just the plankton and, exactly. and coral that we hear about.